welcome to the October 25th um, work session for the Southampton Village Planning Board. We have a quorum and um, I'd like to open the work session. Tell them I'm gonna, I'll deal with it later. I'm, I'm, I'm here, for, I'm here. Do we have to open it? I'll make a motion that we open it. I second. Okay, that's, we've got a second. So, um, first item on the agenda is 689 Halsey Neck Lane. Public hearing yep. closed October 4th, consider decision on it. Yeah, so this is basically here that we're going to vote next Monday yep. on um, the decision. Yeah, so um, I, there's a draft decision that's been circulated. If you have any questions, uh, let us know. We can uh, yep. answer your questions or and or modify. That's a pretty straightforward uh, resolution approving the yeah. schedule. Uh, this is yeah this is this is the the harry motion I'm, I'm i'm all set okay okay so we'll move on to site plan seven um pal avenue i'm going to turn it until uh, um they're requesting an adjournment till february Oops. 2020. i wanted to show you the um request actually said uh, their request and an adjournment for all purposes to the february meeting to give them some more time uh, to work yeah. out the details I actually, I spoke with the um, applicant's attorney today and he mentioned that they had made some headway with the MTA to try to get that easement. They met with them on site. So it, it is actually looking like they might be able to achieve that nearly impossible task. So I think the adjournment makes sense. Okay, uh, as long as they're making headway, uh, I mean, it's open and running and, and it looks, looks reasonably eloquent and not crowded and they keep painting and moving this the, the the old carriage around and stuff so i don't think we have a disaster there but we got to get it organized with the railroad agreed um so we'll we'll revisit that in february um so you'll next, vote on that you'll vote on it on monday though to make it on the, on the adjournment yes of course yep, yep. yeah we'll adjourn it officially Okay, the, the next item on the list is Town of Southampton, 51 Pond Lane. Town of 51, okay. This is the, the, the Connor House, which is being yes, renovated, but there's there are other things coming for which we've got um, conduct of interest that is, has deeply concerned me forever, but uh, we, are we doing anything on it today? Or are we waiting for a hearing on, on Monday? I think someone's here. Okay, I, there, there, I got an announcement that there's going to be something on this matter at length in front of the trustees on Tuesday. I think it would be like the 8th because the the board of trustees has taken over this matter from the the zoning uh, board of appeals and so there'll be a, a hearing a public hearing on it which is the next step um and tony's in charge of this you know we, we all have this wonderful thing where things are done serially instead of simultaneously and the boards don't talk to each other so um i i leave it up to him as to what he thinks is best but it seems to me that lack of simultaneous action on this is probably a detriment to the community and probably to the applicants. Kat, is the applicant here? Um, Antoinette handles that on this meeting, but um, I, I was gonna ask, there is no Tuesday the 8th. So what day were you really what, speaking of? Well, that, that was the one that an email came from the, the, the village or something to me. As a meeting, they were gonna hold on this matter uh, Alan's right. I, I got that email as well. Let me see if I can dig it up. I, I, I was at that uh, meeting you, and they removed it from the uh, agenda on the ZBA and they're going to have a new application fee. They're not going to charge an application fee, but they're going to let it go before the Board of Trustees and then back on. I do have Mr. Curse, Cur Curcio. Thank you. Curcio in the audience if you'd like me to let him in but that um i was there and i do have the notes from the zba right in front of me that's what they they motioned on that at the last meeting does he want to talk i have his hand up i just okay yeah let's let's okay 
It's here. People we'll listen. We listen to anybody. Okay. I'm letting him in right now. He was there with us at the ZBA as well. Okay. And I just need you to unmute and put your camera on, please. There Hello. we go. Thank you. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay. Yep. I just wanted to clarify a little bit. Uh, we didn't take the entire application off of the ZBA. Um, it is off the calendar and it's going to be re-noticed, uh, most likely for the November 18th hearing. Uh, that is to just clarify what exactly we're going for. The zoning board requested that we do that. Uh, basically, with the new law that was passed, the board of trustees can now uh, make a ruling on a special use permit, as well as the parking requirement in association with the with the uh, special use permit. So we're going before the Board of Trustees for those two items. The Zoning Board of Appeals application will remain the same otherwise. Uh, we do, however, we are in discussion with our client with possibly making minor alterations to the building size, which we have not finalized yet. So as of right now, the building plan that's being used was the original building plan. I know there was some discussion of shrinking down the, the building significantly. We've kind of decided not to go that route. So we are uh, with the original plan of the 4,410 square foot uh, visitor center, along with the uh, the parking deficiency. We will be presenting that before the board of trustees. So Alice, and you're presenting it. You're presenting it on on. I, I was told. That presentation takes place on Tuesday the 8th. Is that true? I don't know when the Tuesday the 8th is because it's uh, according to the calendar, there's a hearing on the 9th. Maybe that's what you're talking about? Well, maybe the, I have my dates wrong. Yes, I apologize, yeah, sir. I'm not trying to catch up. The night, and there's a work session tomorrow night. So I kind of would like to hear what they have to say tomorrow at the work session. I get a better idea uh, as to what they're, they're feeling. Uh, okay. If you're okay, talking so about the ZBA, no, they, Board of Trustees. Okay, go ahead. Yes. Board ahead. of Trustees. Yeah. I, the notice I got, when I think Tony did too, was about the Board of Trustees doing it. And I may have the date wrong, so I apologize. That's yes, okay. the next public hearing is uh, November 9th. Thank you, sir. You got it. Okay, so, Alice, I just have a question for clarification. It seems like we have three boards involved. The, the trustees, the ZBA, and then our board will be asked to review the site plan that will, will have already been approved? Well, they can't approve a site plan. It sounds like they can approve the special use permit and the parking variance. Okay. Right, we're gonna go before the board of trustees to get our, our use uh, permit along with the parking. And once that's established, then we can go for our variances that were, are gonna be required based off that use. And then once the plan is finalized, we can go before you and get the sign off from the OK on the site plan. I also believe you guys are the lead agency on Seagra as well, right? That went out a while ago. Yeah. yeah. Well, what are the additional variances? Um, <clears throat> there's not additional variances. It's the same variances that were there, just minus the parking and the special permit. OK, I don't remember what they were. Do you remember? There's a, there's a laundry list of them, and I don't remember them off the okay. top of my head. There's okay. There's a couple of minor ones. There's ones where the, the Pierce Concert House was considered a primary structure, and now it, we're going to consider it an accessory. So now there's new setbacks with that. But we're, we're going to talk to the board about that as well, because we have some ideas regarding that and a couple other minor variances. OK, the, um, the council, may I ask the procedural question? At one point, I think the planning board following the procedures became the CICRA um, age, uh, lead. Has that changed with all this movement of, of laws and proce different procedures? Is this a, uh, the same as it was, or is that different now? We're still lead agency. Okay, so we're still lead. So the thing with this between, as among or between the Zoning Board of Appeals and the uh, Village Board of Trustees hasn't adjusted that then. No, I don't think it would affect that. No. Okay. I'm I, 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 two, two smart a, lawyers here. I just wanted to know the outcome. Yeah, that's a good question, Alan. And I will, I will certainly look at that, but I don't, I don't think it would affect our lead agency status. Thank you, ma'am.
Okay, so we'll most likely deal with this in, at our January meeting from the sounds of things. Yeah, it's, or December. Or start. December 18th. Oh, yeah, that's true. We're going to be on December just as a control date because I think we're going to have, uh, we'd have both of our hearings at that point by the time that comes around. Okay. All right. Great. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Okay. Okay. And um, the next item on our agenda is a site plan review for 71 Hill Street. 71. Yeah, okay. Yeah, this is the, this was where uh, uh, Nelson Pope and Voorhees was getting a refreshment or a, a, a more specificities uh, or limitations from the Board of Trustees, as I remember it, as to what it is they really approve and what's coming at us with respect to this. And the big issue that that we had before, I guess it was Jane especially spoke up, was the amount of, of um, housing, uh, what do we call it, subsidized housing or whatever it is. Specifically the workforce housing. Workforce housing Work, and yeah, parking, well, I, I think, work, were our, our biggest concerns, parking and workhouse forcing, workforce housing. Yeah, 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 workforce housing. And I, I, I sort of mumbled probably with, with Jane, I think the workforce housing thing given this long specifics of the prior planning commission for the village and everything else is not a minor, but it's a major issue. I think there's six units there and why we're doing less than six is for me, um, I will take the application the way it comes, but given the village code and all that was done when they adopted it through secret for so long, when the planning board, I think was run by semi at that point, anything less than, full workforce housing above the stores in the village is a real village issue, planning issue. Now that we're going to revise the plan, but that was the plan of 10 years ago. So I guess it's less than six. It was down to two. So I don't know what um, Nelson Pope and Boris has learned since then. So, um, so we had, do you want me to go through the memo a little bit, Tony? Um, sure. I mean, um, so one of the things that we, um, had been confused about was that this had received, according to the resolution of the Board of Trustees, approval under two special use permits in the code. One is a uh, workforce housing with a resort hotel, and the other is a transient motel. And so they had yep. conflicting requirements. And so that had been very confusing in review of this because the resolution very specifically stated both of these special use permits. So we requested <laughs> clarification from the Board of Trustees and um, Alice had prepared a memo um, and got some feedback. Uh, Roy Stevenson on behalf of the Board of Trustees had reached out to me um, by phone just to let me know that this was in the works, that there had been an error in the actual resolution, that the intent was never for it to be approved as a transient hotel. That's a very different thing than they are proposing. Um, that would have had a um, additional density restrictions um, per unit basis um, because it, it reflected it referred back to the special exception um, requirements for a hotel, um, but that doesn't apply here. So what applies is that is they do have a workforce housing with a resort hotel is um, under 116-5F. And so no longer do, does that density uh, limitation apply. And also we got clarification from the building inspector that the way that they had uh, calculated the parking is correct, that the parking reduction that is allowed for the VB district, because a lot of there's a lot of shared parking in the village business district, um, can be applied for the commercial uses on the site. And so that does apply to the hotel resort units as well. So that was the interpretation we got from the building inspector. And we are expecting that the Board of Trustees will need to amend their approval. Um, the one last detail that Roy commented on was that the plan that was shared with the Board of Trustees did show four workhouse units as opposed to two, which was um, something that this, this board had uh, expressed concern about. 
So uh, I imagine that that will be in the revised plans that we get. Um, and in the meantime, we did provide an additional planning review that had some requests for additional materials, additional details to help us through this review. So that's where we're at this at this time. Um, I haven't we haven't heard anything more from the board of trustees as to when they would put this on for an amended decision. Um, and uh, I, I don't have anything in writing from the board of trustees yet. That confirms right. my understanding. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that, that my, my, mine too. So the issues are still there, but they're being refined. That's nice. Yeah. And um, Kathy, Kathy, since we have Nelson Pope and Rory's are doing lots of things in this, in this process, is your understanding of what the current acting building commissioner says uh, correct? Yes. Yes. And in, and okay. in fact, in this case, um, this is a unique, you know, this is a unique place. A lot of people do come uh, by uh, Hampton Jitney, for instance, and don't bring their own cars. Um, and yeah. so um, that, are there that statistics, doesn't make sense to this. Are there yeah. statistics to support that? I, that's, I don't have that information. Well, how can you make that statement then? And I'm not, I, I mean, I'm just like, Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. So, I mean, what do they do if it if their if their parking lot is full? Do they just say uh, park on Hill Street or go go to the municipal lot? What? How would something like that be handled? I think that's a question for the applicant. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I know. I'm I'm speaking rhetorically, but it, that's yeah. seems like uh, it's, a, it's an still, odd situation with a hotel in. It's still an issue that I uh, Tony, I'm with you. It's still an issue that has to be reviewed. I've known Tim forever, and he's a good fellow as, as acting building commissioner. But he's, from according to the press, which I, I believe only half of what they say, he's going to be supplemented by a planning czar to do village planning, who will review all these things in addition to his interpretation. So that's why I asked my question, which is if NPV thinks he's correct. So thank you. Kathy, for your answer. From a, from a code perspective, he's correct, um, but the planning board definitely can ask those questions of the applicant. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Is, the, is there someone in the in the audience that wants to speak? Yes. So I have three hands up. I have Linda Riley, Beatrice Gotheff, and yep. Justin Cervallo. So I, I mean, you tell me what to do. I know it's a work session. So. Um. So, I mean, I guess the, the point, I mean, what at the at the public meeting next week, I don't know what else would be accomplished um, if there are haven't been revised plans or if there aren't additional comments from this board. So it might make sense to hear, hear from the applicant tonight just to, to see. I mean, they may want to ask for more time. Yeah, well, uh, Linda's always very informed about this stuff. Okay. I think we should let them talk. Okay, I, I, I'm happy to do it. Would you like me to let both people in? Justin put his hand down now, but I have Linda and Beatrice's hand up. Should I let both in? Yeah, let's get as much information as we can before. You just have to tell me what to do. It's your call. Yes. <laughs> yes. Come on, Chairman, you're in charge. <laughs> I said yes six times. Okay, yes. I'm, I, it's, it's, I'm doing it. It just, there's a lag. Hang on okay. one second. Okay, so Linda, I do. Linda and Beatrice, if you could both put your cameras on and unmute yourselves. Sorry for the delay uh, in that time. Tony, in fact, Zoom sucks and we got to get out of this someday. <laughs> I think I'm up. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. There you are. Yes. Affir affirmative. I'm okay. up too. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, good. Affirmative. Did GD, do you want me to go first or do you want to go first? Sure. All right. Uh, so I just um, so we've received the comments and uh, are addressing um, all of them. But I would love to to ask the group, I mean, but for the bat houses, um, it looks like the, the parking um, is OK. It looks as though we're transferring the word um, resort hotel for transient hotel, which solved a lot of the questions from the last meeting. And I guess 
and, and we're hiring a traffic consultant to look at the internal circulation. But what am I allowed to ask what specifically you might like to see revised uh, other than the traffic and the more specific you know, spe specificity on pedestrian access and um, the plantings as soon as we know what the footprint is and, and how this is going to work, of course, we're going to be putting in as beautiful a landscape job as possible. That's important to any resort and also downtown village project. Some guidance? Well, uh, oh, the, the workforce housing. Oh, the workforce housing. I knew there was something. Okay. <laughs> there was one little more important thing there. <laughs> So the workforce housing, it, 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 I think we're talking semantics here. Um, going back 10 years, we were talking about the possible, about Viradian Way becoming a, a green space and in return for being able to take back Viradian Way, which had been donated to the town about 50 years ago, or the village rather, um, we were offering two workforce houses, the quid pro quo. And then it went to four workforce houses, and then there was no Viradian Way, and we went from 46 hotel units down to 38 hotel units, and it's two workforce housing units. Um, and th the reality is that I, I have no issue converting as much of the space as the village would like to see converted from the offices to year-round primary residence period. Um, there are currently eight units in building F, which I think was designated or redesignated unit three. There are two units that can be put on the top of building E, which was the old Merrill Lynch building. I'm happy to do it, but it doesn't tie in with the resolution um, or the, the special use permit. So I, I, I just, and I, I've been told I have to go to the ZBA to get permission to do that. I think Linda may be able to help here, but if you would like to see four workforce housing units, that's 66% of the residential units proposed at the moment, because we're trying to comply with only on the second floor above commercial in this village business district. Um, we're offering 33 and a third percent of the units to be created to be workforce housing units, but the, the spiritual intent is to provide year-round housing for people working in the village and not at $8,000 a month in rental. Um, so I feel as though I'm in your hands to a certain extent, and I agree with you about, but, but again, it's year-round housing for people who are residents of the village. Um, um, this is Alan McFarland. I'm, I hear what you're saying. <laughs> no I'm, I, I, I can confess at this non-voting, you know, work session or something. Uh, I have a, a bias based on your application so far that this is fundamentally a good thing. What has caught my attention, which I uh, can bore you with in detail probably someday, is if you read all the, the history, and you've got a lot of history, but if I read my brief history on this board, dealing with the code of the village that applies to the very few things that the planning board is involved in and has to do. Since we're involved in the uh, things that are commercial, there is a strong thing in the village, item by item, well, it's come up in many other applications, that it's sort of like baseball, where if there's a tie at first base, the base runner wins. In this case, you just summarize it at the end by saying, if we can deal with year round housing for people that are important to the village because they work there or so forth, that's a good idea. And I, I, the planning board can only respond to your application. I throw, I have to throw the ball back to you. You're doing a lot of good things. The board, when I was on it, has been through the Viridian Way issues. We've heard from the Viradians, who many of us uh, have known for 40 or 50 years. They have strong views about everything. It, 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 the, the balances that are involved are, are not easy. But on the housing, at one point, the trustees of the village were emphatic that any chance to build more workforce housing year-round 
was important to the village. And uh, there's a new planning commission coming. They may change it, but right now that's that's the mandate to the planning board. Doesn't, doesn't I, work I, house forcing, workforce housing come with some sort of a rent restriction? Yes. That's can, to me, that's the issue here. Can can I can I jump in here? Please, Please. Linda, enlighten us. <laughs> okay. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Let, let me jump in here. The, the, the workforce housing per se is a use that only um, exists in the code in connection with the resort hotel section. Um, there, there are other ways of having affordable housing. The workforce housing does have a rent restriction to answer your question directly. It is 130% of uh, you know, the Suffolk County median. I don't have the whole formula off the mean, top of my head. Mean, yeah. But yep. but uh, but we've 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 done the math and it it comes out to um Didi will correct me. I, I don't remember the exact number. I think it comes out to around thirty five, thirty three hundred dollars a month or something like that that we would be permitted yeah, to charge. Approximately, yeah. Yeah. So there are so it would be around 3300 a month that we that we would uh, be limited to charging on the workforce housing. There well, are other, pardon me? That's a lot for rent. Yes, yeah. yeah. I mean, these, these, these are, uh, you know, not huge units. They don't, under the code, they had to be at least 400 square feet and they all are, uh, but um, it, it is an appreciable rent. What I think the client's goal is, is to provide really as much housing as possible that is meant for local people. It doesn't all have to be quote unquote workforce. There could be another, you know, it could be other rental units that are intended for people, with, they might be duplexes with more bedrooms, et cetera that will rent for a little bit more, um, but- what, Like what? But what? Well, we can make a proposal. Uh, we're, we're trying we, we've to- We've already, I'm just jumping in. The, the, the rents on the, the, the banker package have been put together between $2,500 and $3,800 a month at the moment. Um, the, this is still downtown. It's a little bit more urban than uh, other areas within the village or within the town. And this is, and this, they're small and they're on the second floor. So this is not, um, you know, it's not for um, marble double sinks and five piece bathrooms here. It's, but it's a wonderful opportunity without changing the streetscape without creating any additional building mass to right. have housing. The so question what is, your is whether what, it's what is designated. Your, yeah. So then what and, is your hesitation to call it workforce housing? Because I went through this, um, Tony, about 10 years ago. And with- Well, I wasn't then here workforce, 10 years ago. And I know, I'd like but I was. <laughs> just, okay. I, I don't want somebody to, to have a lottery to tell the landlord who is allowed to live there and who isn't to jump the lottery tray. You know, it's, it, it has a little bit of history because I've been trying to convert some of these spaces into housing for many years. So right now I'm going exactly by code. Um, two is done. If you're telling me that we need to do four workforce housing, we will do four workforce housing. And then you know, I'll wait for the ZBA to say it's okay to potentially do more without a, a without a, the definition of, you know, it's, it's not section eight, it's not, it, you know, it's, it's just housing that hopefully the landlord will be able to rent to people. And I, I don't mind designating year round rental. You know, I don't want people where we're going to take these things and then arbitrage them for expensive summer rentals. These are supposedly housing units. It's just the term workforce with all the bells and whistles and, and ribbons and the, the, bit in the horse's mouth tying it back but again whatever it is that you're comfortable with of course is what we're going to well, do it's not a comfort yeah. level i think there, there's some assurance that comes it, it, assurance to the board that comes with the clarification that it's workforce because we can rely on that calculation to set the rent 
And I get it. Like nobody's going to pay $12,000 a month for 400 square feet. I, I understand that. But, you know, our duty is to sort of watch out for this sort of development in the village. And the, the only reason why I'm concerned is because I would like that designation. I don't even know how it's enforced. Well, there's That's, the rub. <laughs> right. Um, uh, with, with many, with every, almost all of these. But. <laughs> can I, can I um, jump in again, if you don't mind? Mm -hmm. um, I just want to point out that um, w one of the reasons we wanted to talk tonight was to do a little brainstorming about what the planning board's preferences are because uh, of some constraints in the code, which have been largely mentioned by Kathy Eisman, and, and housing works into it. Under the code, um, we can go to ZBA and get a special exception permit for non-workforce housing, but only on the second floor over commercial uses. You know, if there was a way that we could um, get some different kinds of apartments on the first floors of those other buildings that face 71 Street, Hell Street, that might be a way of sort of expanding. Uh, the the housing stock that's available for affordable things, um, but it, we have some constraints between the code and and what I think the planning board wants to see, and we're just trying to see if um, because it's useful going into ZBA too to be able to say this is something that the planning board or the village would really like to see. Uh, more housing, less commercial, et cetera. If, if, so that's part of the reason we're tossing it around. But also there are other constraints. We, we talked about parking um, and Kathy mentions a number of things in her memo, including uh, the fact that the code, you know, provides for a 10 foot buffer area along uh, between any parking lot and the boundary line, um, and that we've got four curb cuts where the code speaks about two, and some internal circulation problems. All of that brings us back to sort of the site plan, and we, we do want to provide adequate parking. It is in the applicant's interest to provide adequate parking, but there, there isn't room, and this is down to only 38 suites. That's really all the applicant is, is, is really getting out of this, 38 resort suites. Um, there's, there's just no, no way to push and pull these 38 suites and, and give all of the buffer area, all of the internal circulation, all of the truckload and curb cuts, et cetera, that, that might be required. Um, we're, we're willing to go to ZBA and seek some variances on some of this stuff. Um, but we also want to feel you out if in a brainstorming kind of way for what you think is most important here. So can I ask a question? Yeah. 38 to me sounds like a lot. And, and if you have trouble meeting setbacks, why wouldn't you reduce the number of units? Because, because like it, won't be, it won't be vi economically viable. Okay, so maybe the site isn't economically viable for what you want to do. Is that is there a potential of that? <laughs> I hope well, we not. The site, the site is zoned. I mean, as a village business, we, we, I guess we would have zero lot lines and can develop 75% of the lot area. So it would be, um, you know, an, an acre and a half, 60,000 square feet or close to 80,000 square feet. So we could develop approximately 50,000 square feet on the first floor and go up two stories. That's not the highest and best use for the village in accordance with the zoning as it is. Um, originally, this was 46 suites. It was a linear building that uh, was set back the appropriate amount from Viridian. Um, the parking was behind it. It wasn't, an, it wasn't a glorious site plan. Could go back to that. 
but I think this is a little bit better. Uh, and this has a swimming pool, which I think is really important if we want to have a, you know, a, a four star lodging property within the village in such a prime location. Um, go back to Linda. I would like to address your point directly too. Um, and that is the, the, the village, um, it seems to us and some, some conversations we've had with village board members, et cetera, that the village doesn't really need more office space. Uh, given what's gone on in the last five years, particularly, there's a glut of office space all over the village. And um, it, it, that, that's not what's needed. It's, it's not the, the future. Um, and, and little retail units in the back are, are probably not the best thing for the village. Um, it, 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 the applicant, Dee Dee in the Southampton Inn and 71 Hill, always were trying to do something that would be, yes, a benefit to them, um, because what's there now is, um, it, is not up to their standards. Um, and it, if they're gonna build something new though, um, it, the idea of a hotel that's attractive, that's upscale, that, um, that provides needed accommodations for visitors who come to use the arts and everything <clears> else, <throat> that this it, it is a more attractive use combined with housing than, than having a, a commercial, I mean, she, she could continue going on the way she is, but she, she thinks she's providing, she's proposing something that is better. Um, Airbnb is not, is not the answer. It's not, uh, it's terrible to the neighbors. Um, and we're losing uh, inns left and right, lost the latch, as you know. Uh, and what's needed is, is accommodations for visitors and, and housing. We're trying to prepare that. We're trying to squeeze that in with, with me meeting everybody's interests. Um, I hope that answers your question more directly. Beautifully, thank you. So uh, thank you. you're saying that if there was a way to get um, additional workforce units and to use the ground floor, ground floor as possibly um, additional workforce units that you'd be willing to do that. No, that that's something that we'd consider. <laughs> no, what? please, I, I no. really can't. Right, so, so D, not, I'm sorry. Not the um, workforce. I'm sorry. Um, not so, a uh, workforce meaning um, units that are priced appropriately for year-round units for working people in the village of South, Southampton. So, I mean, the monthly rent for a two-family, two-person family. I think the limit is 3,140 based on the numbers that I have. Um, and that, it depends on the cost of utilities and so forth. But, um, but that's, you know, that's a one or two bedroom place. So, um, you know, if you were to build, you know, two bedroom units on the ground floor, and I don't know that this is, you know, this would require a code change or an, a change to the, to the, um, the special permit that the board of trustee has, because otherwise we're looking at a, um, a village-wide um, change in the code, um, but it does does specify on the upper units, on the upper floors. So, just don't know if that's something that you want to explore. Um, but that would agree that would increase the number of units. So, well, I, and, I think we want to. I'm sorry, I should let Linda speak. But no, go ahead, um, go ahead, Didi. You know, I I think using the second floor above the um, commercial space is what is in the code. And until we have our new potential update to the master plan, I'm happy to comply because we're not doing building construction, we're doing interior renovations, and we are sizing the sewer treatment plant in a way that will accommodate um, future residential if this is something that we want to do. So for right now, I, I think the, the discussion is whether it's two workforce housing units and four um, market rate affordable housing units, if that's not an oxymoron. Or if it's very important, I will do four workforce housing units and two um, market rate housing units. 
but the concept is again year round rental um, apartments. If, if we want it, I think we want it. I, I, think, I think the Board of Trustees wants it. I think, I, I think it's, a, it's a good thing to do, but I think in terms of the hospitality, I don't know what can shrink anymore. I mean, I've already taken out um, 11 of the nine of the units. And, and this is part of the business revitalization committee um, goal was to be able to try to bring some tourists, visitors in on a year round basis so that we can support the shops and the restaurants and the cultural um, offerings within the village. We're, we're woefully under keyed in terms of travel visitors. Lisa, do you have anything to add by any chance or? Um, yeah, I've been just taking all of this in because I was not part of this discussion either 10 years ago. And what I'm wondering now is wh what is what exactly is the formula um, with this uh -huh. hotel and in meaning how many units are required? Um, is it just the, whatever is available on a second story level or what is required based on I, the number of units you have that have to be addressed vis-a-vis -vis workforce housing and or affordable housing? Can I, can because I answer we, we that? Keep going from, yeah, because it's in the know, code. We keep going from two to four, but is right. there more than that? There's, there, there, the code, the code, the way it's drafted does not specify the number of units that would be part of you know basically what the board of trustees approves in its special permit use as it is the, the board of trustees did not um, in their resolution um, specify the number of hotel units when we showed it to the board of trustees we had 46 suites and, and since then, we've cut it down from 46 suites to 38. So there is fewer hotel suites being proposed than the board looked at, but they didn't name a, a limit. In terms of the workforce housing, um, at, at, a, at, at a point, there's no question that they saw four on, on their plans. Um, but, uh, you know, from, from Dee Dee's point of view, she, uh, the, the four stemmed from the whole Viridian Way being involved. And we only had one short hearing after we changed our application to take Viridian Way out of the mix. Um, we had one brief hearing on, in, April, uh, in April before the Board of Trustees. And um, we discussed at that time doing a mix of housing and then they adopted a resolution that did not specify how many workforce housing versus how many suites versus anything else. Didn't deal with commercial or office or market force rentals. Presumably, you know, those are still things that could be done. It, it, they well, just, yeah. Sorry, to, that just raises the obvious question to me then. Should that go back to the trustees in which, at which point that they should um, have some kind of specificity against that point. I mean, no. they. <laughs> I, I mean, the it, specificity. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Linda. No, no. You can. You can. I mean, they didn't seem to. Well, I. I don't know how to answer that. Not from our point of view. I mean, uh, no. they they wrote the resolution. No, no, uh, listen. It sounds to me like there are several initiatives that need to be taken. Councillor Riley knows, has made a, her usual elegant reasoned argument. I, under, I hear every word of it. And Dee Dee's goals and visions are certain. Uh, and there's a long history here, especially even just having what she's done already. So it seems to me that since the agenda that we're responsible for, and I don't have the code in front of me, so I can't be specific with council even on a sort of an ex party basis, it seems to me that you, since you're going, Kathy's going back to the trustees, the issue should be taken up with them specifically 
they should know somehow, Linda, that there's a uh, concern at the planning board level about this mandate we've been struggling with on Job's Lane and other places about workforce housing. What do they want to do? They're the guys who set the law. They're the guys who wrote the plan. If, if your application reflects their wishes, it will have a, a, should have a lot of weight with the planning board in its review. I, I, I hear what you're saying, and Dee Dee's very persuasive, so are you, but go talk to them. The current village board in passing these resolutions are doing their best, but there is an extraordinary lack of historic experience on that board right now, with possibly the exception of our former chairman, as to what this stuff's all about. So go address it with them and, and get the best direction for us, if you would. That's the only speech I can make. Uh, the chair did send a memo to the trustees requesting clarification on the number of units. So, I understand he was following our thoughts from last, last session, but uh, it seems to me it still needs to be addressed because governance of the village by memorandum is only partly successful, in my opinion, especially when we got to do everything by this far as Zoom. For information. Yeah, I know. I'm with you. And my guess is if, if you polled every one of the trustees as to whether they ever sold or dealt with it, you might not bat 100. All right. I will... Um... <clears throat> I'll, I'll work on that. Thank you. Just more process to get as complete an application with them involved as, as one can. You know, I, I think I should just put it out there too that when you presented the plan at the last meeting, where, you know, it was very obvious on the plan that was approved by the trustees that there were four units and then the plan you put in front of us was two. And when we questioned it, you just made it sound like you, 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 like you wouldn't acknowledge the difference. So it, it, it set a tone for me that was difficult to work with. It's, and I just want to put that out there. Like it was very clearly for, it came to us as two. And when we brought that up, it was as if I was speaking a foreign language. So. I, I just want to put it out there that it it was hard to get my head around. Like it, it made me suspect. Well, I have to apologize if there was a tone that wasn't trying to promote housing for people who work in the village. And I guess my concern, having been there, done that, um, was I don't want to get bogged down with the definition nope. and the the tendencies. I also feel very strongly and have for my whole career um, that you don't want to have a specific type of housing. I mean, I've spent my life and so has my husband doing different housing. If you have a third of the unit's workforce and two thirds of the unit something else, it's not going to matter if you want to have two thirds workforce and one third something else. The idea is really the same. It's of definitions. And so if it's coming off being you know, arrogant or intransigent, that is not the point. I, I agree and support housing for people who work in the village. Um, for, so I, I'm sorry. Oh, I, I'm not asking for an apology. I, I'm, <laughs> no, just, but I, I don't want to be... to understand where we're coming from. It, right. And, and, and I'm not going to say mean, no. where I'm coming from. Yeah, I mean, if you if you come back and say you must have four workforce housing units, that's what you're going to have. I'm I'm not going to say no. I'm more concerned about the loading docks and the four. Um, I hadn't picked up the four curb cuts. I mean, there will be no loading per se because all the loading really goes to the entrance of the Southampton Inn. But coming back to Linda and Kathy, um, do we take your comments and buys? Or I know there's a lot more specificity and detail you're looking for, but some of the things, are, are we allowed to take out, for instance, the south loading dock, the one closest to First Neck Lane? Or, or do we need to have, I mean, how do, how do we handle getting ourselves over all of the, the missing details or explanations? 
Well, I mean, for the loading spaces, this board has the authority to waive uh, the required requirements. So uh, make a case for a waiving of the required number of loading spaces. That is something that, you know, might be appropriate. Okay. So I would say come back. Um, just uh, back to the workforce housing thing, just last <laughs> one last thing. Um, so, I mean, when we're talking about 130% of the AMI, we're talking about for uh, one person family is someone that is making $118,300. Um, so, and for a two person family, it's 145200 so we're talking about units that are affordable for people that are making that much money. Um, and I know that the village code does not specify how these would be managed as workforce units, whether they would be managed through the town's housing uh, uh, sorry, agency, or if it would be something that is managed through the village where you just track that these people are income eligible and somehow that is tracked by the village. But I mean, to me, it's more, you say semantics. I mean, if you were to agree that, um, you know, hey, these are monthly rents that are appropriate for a two, one bedroom, a two bedroom a studio. Um, I mean, that may be what we're talking about here. And I don't know if that's true, but your multifamily units are, you know, they're 992 square feet. I mean, that's a pretty good size apartment. Um, but to me, that's still probably a two person family. So, you know, is $3,000 too low for you? Um, so those are some of the questions that I think you should think about, you know, whether you call them workforce and just agree to um, limit the, the rents on these, you know, that might go a long way. And I'm speaking for me this is from a you know, planning perspective. So, Well, I'm a local employer and it, there are many young professionals in this community that drive an hour and a half each way to work. And they could afford a $2,500 a month apartment if they could find it. So that's, that's what I'm thinking. Like, those are the kind of people that I think we should bring into the, the village year round because they'll, they'll go out to dinner in the depths of January. They'll shop at the local stores. And that's, that's what's motivating me is to, if, if we could sort of, if you could help us, <laughs> the village provide housing for that group of people I think it would be fantastic and I realized that just, it didn't no I I totally 100 percent agree with you um I have experienced like a group of three young people working in the village who would like to share how do you calculate the family income for three unrelated people who are going to be in a workforce house. I mean, this is, it's so few units, of course, we're not talking, you know, we're, we're, this is not even making a little dent in a huge haystack, but it's a start. So I, I'm, I, I want to be supportive. That's the deal. It's just whether the village or the town or the county are going to tell me who I need to rent to or whether we're allowed to have a, a lottery that we have fun with and, and and, and welcome people who have jobs. And then what happens when they don't have their jobs and they decide they want to go, you know, arbitrage it, rent it, that they're going to move out West and rent for the summer. That's not for this board, but it's why I just get concerned about the management, the maintenance of standards. This is a huge investment to bring in only half as many new keys as we lost with the village latch, but trying to have them be really lovely units that we're all going to be very proud of have to have certain pretty strict controls on the whole campus. But again, conceptually, yep, I, I want the people working for you who commute an hour and a half to be able to live in the village. Absolutely. Oh, you know, I, I have one other question. Some of the, the servicing of the new units would happen in conjunction with the Southampton Inn as well, right? It's not like a, a whole separate staff and a whole separate Correct. delivery service. Correct. So Only way we, that we can afford so if, to do it. Yeah. If Otherwise, we're, if, we're, consi if yeah. we're considering one less loading dock, we might be able to offset some of that burden with what's existing on the other side already, right? 
Absolutely. There's there's no food and beverage planned. The entire administration and the sales staff and the maintenance staff are all domiciled and will continue to be employed by the Southampton Inn. Okay. Check in, check in, check out. Check in, so right, the registration right. for rooms, all of that. Thanks, okay. Linda. It's um, and actually, you know, we were kind of concerned about having a truck loading space back out onto Viridian Way. I mean, it's just from from a perspective, of, it's just not a really good idea. Um, and when that's happy happening, to eliminate it, it's going to be used for. Right? <laughs> so, yes. um, yeah, we should we should consider the whole thing as one unit when we're looking at parking and loading docks and stuff like that. So, so long as they're in common ownership. Well. All right. Are they? They're they're single they're, and separate. Okay. Go ahead. They they have separate owners legally. They're in single and separate ownership. They're the it all goes back to the same beneficial. You know, mm. one's out. It's it's the same uh, people running it. Um, yeah, but you know what I'm getting at. You know, yeah. if one sells separately from the other, then you have planning considerations that, that were linked to the fact that you've got services being you know, held out of another building and, and use. Good point. I'm sure we can come up with something. Um, yep. Just we have to consider it. OK. Any other comments? I, I think this was good. I'm, I'm glad we talked it out. <laughs> Thank you. Your time. <laughs> Allie? Lisa, you good? Um, um, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm happy that ladies, ladies met their standard they did a good job but we're everybody's more informed and we'll get this application complete well we we will we know you're waiting for a resolution from the board of trustees i i understand that it's in the works i'll work with Absolutely. kathy on some of the other details uh we are amending the eaf and as uh dd said we are uh, going to uh, engage a traffic guide to give us a little report uh, that might help be helpful in terms of circulation and truck loading issues and stuff like that. Good. And I would, um, um, I would, so Tony had brought up, you know, uh, the question on uh, do the statistics support the need for the reduced parking? I think that that might be something that your traffic expert could look at as well. Yep. Everything okay. helps. Because if there's a what if, if it doesn't, you know, if not, if you don't have people come by Jitney or shared cars and you have, you know, two persons families coming in both with their own car, which, you know, I know I've done it plenty of times. Um, you know, you just meet someplace, right? And you have two cars for two people well, at the same restaurant table. We, we, so, we are providing a total of 57 spaces. Um, yeah, and there's some shared... Yeah. I know there's some shared between the parking and there's Viridian, and there's parking use. on Viridian Way. There's right. parking. There's parking on Viridian Way at the moment. There's parking right. on the on the other lot. I mean, yeah, yeah. We, but I I hear you. You want uh, you you want it put in terms of a rationale that comes from a professional, right? No. Yes. Everything makes the application more complete. Okay. Thank you so make, much for make, your for time. To make an informed decision. Okay. Thank you so much for your time. This was helpful to do instead of at a public hearing thing, you know, to do it at a work session was very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, so what about for next week? What would you like to do? Dee Dee, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it up to you, but uh, back on Monday? I don't think we're going to have any revisions for Monday, are we? I think that, that Jack and Brian had start. We're not going to have a traffic study by Monday. Yeah. We can have a lot more specificity um, and, and, and labeling. And I, I guess, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm reluctant to give up a spot, especially since the holidays are coming. I want to keep want to share if it's useful, but. Yeah. Um, but I don't want to waste everybody's time. I, I would think that we're going to do the best we can. And um, could you leave it on the agenda for now? And if if we really uh, feel like we have nothing to add, we will ask for an adjournment and save you the time. Yeah. Is that okay? Definitely. Of course. Great. Yeah. Thank you very much for me. that. Okay. Bye with me.
Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, back to the agenda. Uh, yes, Nancy, the that minute we had already approved two of the minutes that were in this list already. So we only That's have right. September 27th and October 4th to vote on. Tony? Yes. This is Alan. I, I, I am running very late in uh, suburban Vero Beach for KT to make a speech. <laughs> I really got to show up in a few minutes. Okay. I know both of those, both those minutes. I've seen them. I put a few nits on them. So if you want to hold a vote, Let, you can acknowledge that, that I agree. And thank you for well, letting me participate well, by long we're distance not with Frontier tonight. Airlines. Like that. We're going to vote on Monday anyway, right? We'll vote on Monday, Alan. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. That's fine. So th thank you all for your patience and thank Kat for her patience with the high tech. This is, this is, it's a pleasure to participate. Thank you. Thanks, Alan. Thanks, Alan. So I guess okay. we're out of quorum now, so we, we, we have to stop talking, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Mm -hmm.